What's up? What's up? What's good? How y'all doing today? It's your boy Twin Make it. I want to welcome you guys to the Twin Empire. Um, where you will get an opportunity to hear my thoughts. Just my thoughts on a lot of situations that's going on in the NFL or the NBA or just around the world. What's cracking? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I like to take this time out just to kick it with my peoples out here in the digital universe. You know what I mean? I'm a father of four beautiful children that loves a variety of things. And sometimes after all my babies are in bed and I'm sitting back chilling and the missus in the room chilling. I like to talk about sports and other things that's going on in this world, you know. But I also love the 49ers. And anybody that knows anything about the 49ers know that this offseason will be one that will change the next five years because what's about to happen. We're going through a transitional phase. We're going from Jimmy Garoppolo, hopefully, what should be Trigger Trey. That's what I call it. Most people in the Bay Area or out there in the 49 universe or Twitter land or whether it's YouTube world, they call them, you know, Trey Area. But I call them Trigger Trey. Because hopefully, for the first time in a long time, we'll have a quarterback that got a trigger for an arm. One, they can sit back in the pocket, make a three-step drop, five-step drop, roll out on the bootleg or in the play action, and let that joker go. Pull the trigger. He's not a hesit- He's not a, going to be a quarterback that hesitates to pull the trigger. you know. And so I'm hoping, as a 49er fan... Over the last 30 odd years to be excited, extremely enthusiastic about what we are, what we're about to happen. Well, what's about to come, you know, which is the Trey Lance era. And one of the things I want to sit back and talk to and just talk to my people out here about for the next couple minutes or who knows. is about what's going on, man. It's all season. I'm starting to hear a lot of weird stuff, man. I've been hearing weird stuff throughout. I mean, ever since the beginning of last year, since we made this trade, up until now, um, the Super Bowl has just happened, just ended. Um, As a Niner fan, unfortunately, I had to see the Lambs win a Super Bowl ring before we did. Um, There was very big talk about we sunning or owning the Rams, but all that talk is dead. You need to throw that away and throw it in the garbage can again. I mean, that's, 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 that's no more... No more, man. We got to cut it out, you know. We got to realize that Sean McVay, it's his day. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 his time. He has ultimate bragging rights. I mean, he can walk around the house with the white drawers on, with the tidy whities on. You know, some of y'all might be out there young in the digital world, but back in the gap, back in the old days, you may still see some of the, the, the grandpas or the, the elder statesmen of the world walking around late at night, 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the whitey tighties. You know, that's when you know you was the man of the house. You own the house that you was living in. Like, everybody else came to you when the bigger decisions need to be made. And right now in the NFC or in the NFC West, Sean McVay, he's the owner of the whitey tighties, regardless of what you may think. Regardless of what you may feel, regardless of how we were winning, we were 6-0 and over the last six games against them, but we lost the one that was important, which led them or prepared them to go to the Super Bowl and not only go to the Super Bowl, but go there and get the dub. You know, they won. So, unfortunately, right now, Kyle Shanahan can't really say nothing. Us as Niners fans can't really say nothing. Yes, we've been to a bevy of NFC Championship games and we won some. We lost some. Yes, we've been to two Super Bowl in the last 10 years. We haven't won anything. You know, we still ringless. And so right now, we've seen, even in our own division, we've seen the um, Seattle Seahawks win the ring. Now we've seen the Rams win the ring. You know, and as a Niner fan, man, this is just kind of, It's kind of sad. Been a little depressing, you know. And I get the people out there talking about, "Hey, man, we 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 win, 
or we we got the opportunity to play in the championship game or we had the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl like woo but the reason why I fell in love with the Niners was because we didn't just go to the Super Bowl we won the Super Bowl and so the standard has risen to a very high standard only a select few teams have the ability to put their team up on this pedestal and say, hey, this is what we require of thee, the best, which is winning the Super Bowl. And so, unfortunately, we haven't won in a very, very, very long time. You know, the Steelers are one of those teams that has six rings. The New England Patriots have seven rings. I remember there was a time when it was the Cowboys, the Niners, you know, the Steelers. We was all tied up, you know, so it was all cool. You know, I was like, yeah, everybody got five. Not no more. Tom Brady came through in the last two decades and surpassed us with seven. We stuck at five. You know, Steelers made it two Super Bowls. Got two dubs. I mean, hey, I can't get mad. That's over the last 20 years. I mean, hey, they surpassed us. They got six now. You know, so we just been stuck at five. Even with the um, Green Bay Packers, they was below us with four. And as much as I like to crap on Aaron Rodgers and say we beat them in the last, you know, four out of the last times in the playoffs, he still got a ring in the last decade. Well, not necessarily a decade, but, you know, he got one. In the last 12 years, we still ain't won one, you know? And so, man, that's just not cool, you know? I'm not I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy. I want to win and go out and have a, you know, and, and be amongst my, my, my Niner faithful and rejoice and be happy and be glad to Call off work. Tell my kids you're staying at home today. We watching the parade, you know. Go out and hit a bar up and have some drinks. And buy a couple people some drinks who from the area that I'm from. And we all celebrate the 49ers Super Bowl victory. And, and just have a wonderful offseason. And see the beautiful memorabilia and, and all the paraphernalia that would be out. Super Bowl champs. I was a young lad last time this happened, man. I wasn't out there buying. I ain't have the money to go buy what I wanted to. You know what I mean? But now as an adult, if we win, I can really fully embrace what it means to see the 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 pros and the cons, the down years and the and the great years, you know, and really say, hey, we Super Bowl champs again. You know what I'm saying? The Niners are back. But it ain't been like that, man. It's been a lot of disappointment. A lot of times, like, for me personally, like, I'm the guy who, you know, whenever my team loses, mm, I shut down. No ESPN, no NFL Network, no Fox 1, no Fox 2. I ain't hopping on the the, uh, the local um, broadcasting or local radio and, and you no know, listening in. I'm cold turkey. I shut it down. I shut off. I get too upset. I get too angry. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I have high hopes. You know what I mean? And so one thing I want to just talk about for, you know, a little bit is what's going on with Jimmy Garoppolo right now. I was just reading about Peter King. He was on, I think it was KNBR 95.7 or something of that nature, or Damien and Bruce, what it was, I believe. And he was talking about, Jimmy G. And what's the market? You know, what is it that he may go for this offseason? Um, I think not until March 16th or something of that nature when um, the ability to trade players um, is accessed at that time. And so right now, you know, there's rumblings of what will we get for him? You know, whether it's the commanders or the Eagles or what's going on in Pittsburgh, what the Steelers may, you know, think about doing. And all of these things rest on what would happen with the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers and also with the Seattle Seahawks and the one and only Russell Wilson. And so 
however those dominoes fall with those two individuals will determine the market for Jimmy G as far as what you can get for him, you know. And so I've been hearing a lot of people say maybe we can get the 11th pick. I think it is from the Washington Commanders. You know, it sounds so weird saying commanders. You know, we went from the Washington football team to the Washington commanders. But hopefully soon I'll get accustomed to saying it. Um, but it may take a while. And so they say it can be justified giving away their 11th round draft pick for Jimmy G. Who's a proven winner. They call him Jimmy W. And I keep hearing, like, some of these pundits and some of the people I follow, you know, who are, you know, there's a split in the Niner Nation over here or, you know, Niner Empire about what Jimmy G's worth is or what he can actually bring to the team. And one of the things that I I personally, my personal opinion, what I felt about Jimmy G and what's going on with him is this. Jimmy G is cool. Good quarterback. The words that I'm about to say doesn't mean that he's a bad quarterback at all. It just means that I believe that Jimmy G has been surrounded by a plethora of great skilled players on several levels when it comes to the offensive side of the football. I mean, we talk about Debo Samuels. We all seen what he did this year. What a breakout year. You know, he played spectacular. You know, the numbers would say this was one of the greatest or greatest statistical seasons from a 49er wide receiver since the great T.O. Not only the great T.O., but the Hall of Famer T.O. You see what I'm saying? And then we also have the tight end and George Kittle, who was a pro bowler. Alongside with Debo Samuels, we also have the great um, Trent Williams, who was a pro bowler. We also have the great Kyle Juszczyk, our fullback, who was a pro bowler. We had a rookie in Elijah Mitchell who missed six games and still was able to bro- break the San Francisco 49er rookie record, you know, if you are excluding Ricky Waters' um, rookie year, which he set out, and he played the second year and then sur- um, surpassed that. But just how numbers are looked at and during the time that he played, he surpassed it. So he's looked at as, you know, as a rookie, the number one rushing rookie running back in 49ers history. And we also even had Lankin Thomason have his best year at left guard right beside Trent Williams. Then we also had the veteran, the Wiley veteran, Alex Mack, come over at the center position and not only fulfill his duties admirably, but he also made the Pro Bowl as a reserve as well. So the situation for Jimmy G this year was set up for him to be successful. The pieces around him were awesome. I'm excluding the second-year player in Brandon IU, who did a wonderful job once they started to pass him the ball and give him some targets. And also, you know, we can say that he wasn't doing the the small things um, for when it comes to being a pro in his second year, which kind of um, had him with a slow development in the first six weeks, you know, he didn't develop as fast or he wasn't getting the touches and targets as we so desire as 49ers fans early on. You know, there were some things behind the camera, things that needed to get taken care of um, in the front office. Well, not necessarily the front office, but just in the locker room as a professional. And so they say how he was acting and so on and so forth. So, I mean, there was talent all around this guy, Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not taking away from what he is and what he do as a leader. But I'm just saying for as talent, when you're surrounded by great talent in the multiple positions, you should be able to go out there and do justly. And not only be surrounded by great talent, but then also be coached and have the schematics of what we would call a great mind in Kyle Shanahan and also the um, recently departed, not that type of departed, but who has upgraded himself and him and his family has taking their great talents and um, the love and the professionalism that they do have to Miami Dolphins. We want to congratulate the one and only Mike McDaniels, you know, for going on and moving to Miami and getting ready to have his first opportunity as a head coach. You know, him and Kyle Shanahan has been together for years, over a decade together, 
and those two created an offensive system and rushing game and an offensive game that has been able to stand the test of time over the last 10 years as far as the complexities and how they run the, the zone scheme and the mini um, just all the different type of formations, all the different types of rushing actions and motions that they came out of as far as what they've done together. And, I mean, come on, it's been amazing, you know, to see what they were able to do in this day and age when it comes to rushing the football when it has become a very pass-happy league. And so with that being said, Jimmy G, a lot of people saying, well, go to Washington and go to these other teams and saying that he will be able to bring what he brought as the winning culture or the, the, the winner that he is to these other teams as if he wasn't surrounded by extreme talent. Not saying he wasn't able to go out there and help these people get better. Not saying that he wasn't able to go out there and lead these men. But we have to quit saying that just because you was able to lead these men as if that just can easily be translated to another team. When you yourself was brought in and changed, well, not necessarily you changed, but the culture that you were brought into, the scheme that you was brought into, was one that was above and beyond what was going on around the league. As we saw this year when we was getting ready for the playoffs before we played against the Dallas Cowboys in first round, everybody was saying this, the 49ers are different. The way that they play, the physicality, the way they run the ball, the devotion to the run, um, the commitment to the run, um, no matter what, the stubbornness to the run, that the 49ers are somebody different. They're not what we usually see out here in these other teams. So that was the culture. That's what um, Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, um, the owner, and the GM, all these guys, Rich and them, they, what they came and brought here, that what stabilized and helped Jimmy G become who he is, you know, far as as a winner. Now, I know they say, well, Kyle didn't win with any other quarterback. The other quarterback that he picked or the other quarterback that was drafted or that was on the team, they were not Great. They were backups. They they were brought in to be backups. Serviceable backups. You see what I'm saying? And so when somebody tell y'all, hey man, Jimmy's cool, but then people be like, but I don't want him on my team. It's a reason. Because they know they don't have a Kyle Ustake. They know they don't have a George Kittle. They know they don't have a Debo Sammons. They know they don't have a a Lincoln Thompson and a, and a Trent Williams on the line. Like, they know these things. They saying that y'all think y'all just going to take Jimmy Garoppolo out that system and bring him over here to the com commanders and then all of a sudden expect him to be get these Ws. Like, nah, bro, pump your brakes. Hold on. It don't roll like that. We wish it would be that smooth of transition, but, man, it's the NFL. Stuff just don't work like that. And so what? has really got me kind of ticked off lately is just hearing how everybody make it up. Like, bro, Jimmy G, I think he had like the second to the last least passing attempts in the NFL. So Kyle Shanahan was managing his risk and reward with this young fella. Even though he had a George Kittle, a Debo Samuels, um, a Brandon Ayuk. You know, a uh, Jawan Jennings, uh, a Kyle Juszczyk coming out the backfield. Even though he had all these weapons and tools in the in the kitchen, he still minimized him and just let him go in there and make hamburger helper. That's it. He didn't let him get real um, risque. You know what I'm saying? And so we got to realize that that when you sending this man out here and prepping this man up, I'm glad that he go go. Let him go. I'm not mad. As the great Elsa say, let it go. Let him go. Wherever he desires to go, I want him to go free. But let us not sit here and act as if this guy was a top 15 quarterback. When it comes to stats, I know it's not all about stats. But we have noticed. It's the reason why Jared Goff was there for a moment. But that moment didn't last. And why they brought in who? Matthew Stafford. There are certain types of quarterbacks that come in and have a particular arm talent that when push come to shove at each level that you grow up or go to in the playoffs all the little small minutiae things get heightened you can't get away with it 
And so the defense have the opportunity to sit there, watch film, and know this is how we need to stop you. And we saw that as a Niner fan. We saw that with the Cowboys, how our offense was stagnant, not necessarily doing anything, was sputtering. But we did get a couple points, you know what I'm saying, which was cool. Seen it in Green Bay. The weather was nasty, inclement weather, but still our special teams and our defense showed out. And got us some points, got some buckets. And even then, when we got made to the NFC Championship game, we scored some points. We lost 17 to 20. I mean, over the last thing, 10 games, the 49ers helped their opponents to 17 points, and we were scoring around like 28, 27 points a game. We needed more offensive firepower, point blank, period. And so now we're at the time in the situation where Jimmy G, it's about time for you to get up out of here. About time for you to go you know what i'm saying and i thank you for what you've done you gave us some some encouragement you kind of shifted the culture some and i appreciate it and it's okay for us to say bye 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 like it's time to get up out of here man and so now that the off season is like officially here, the rumors are about the like the rumor birds are about to start. Tweet, 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 tweet. tweet. Twitter started about you know about to start talking. You know the GMs and you know the people in the local um, news and the people the local beat writers are starting to get their ear to the street trying to see what's going on, what's about to get cracking for the off season. And I'm excited, man. I'm excited for Jimmy to go ahead and leave. Hopefully, um, my boy Kyle Shanahan will go on here and say, hey, this is Trey Ting. I know he has to earn it. I know he has to show the work. I know he has to show the ep- Like I know he got to do all that stuff. That's cool. But I believe you didn't waste all those picks with guessing that he would do these things. There's something that you saw in that young man that you was like, you know what? I want him. What can Trey do for us as a 49er organization? And also, what can he give to the 49er fans? So I'm excited to see that, man. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm thrilled to see what's about to happen for us. I'm thrilled to see if we get a second-round draft pick for Jimmy, I'm cool. If we get a late first round, I'm cool. But honestly, I'm ready personally just for him to get up out of there you know what i'm saying like it is what it is your time has ran its course thank you for your services you was well compensated thank you for playing because now everybody was talking about like nobody knows what jimmy g was playing with behind the scenes you know he was really hurt his shoulder his thumb and a lot of people were saying this in the locker room, which they admire his strength. They admire his tenacity to go out there and play despite him not being 100%. But that's one of the main reasons why we drafted Trey Lance. I mean, it was kind of crazy that everybody was like, hey, man, he was hurt. That's why he didn't play the way that we thought he, he could have played. But he was hurt once again. He was hurt. And so... Man, I'm just so happy, man, that Trey get a chance to go out there and show what he has. Um, I can't wait for him and Brandon Ayuk to begin to hook up to um, expand the offensive playbook. Um, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this running game. Um, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with the defense. Um, One of the things that people don't really think about or they sleep on is what happens with the team in the transition from year to year. You lose about 30 to 35 players every year, man. And everybody make it seem like, well, next year, I heard Peter King talking, talking about, well, next year, Trey Lance need to start off from the get-go showing what he got. And I'm like, bruh. Jimmy G had a very slow start off to the 2021-2022 season. After those first two games that he played against Detroit, and then he played against Philadelphia. Detroit was a good game. Philadelphia was a struggle. A struggle. Office was stagnant. I mean, wasn't nothing really getting at all. 
Then we had the Green Bay game coming, you know, the third game, and then, like, we lost four games in a row. So how is it that Jimmy G, uh, eight-year veteran, fifth-year starter for the 49er, gets the grace? He gets the mercy to go into a season in the first six weeks, really go two and – well, I mean, he went three and five, you know, after the first eight weeks. Like, he had the grace to do that. And he is an eight-year veteran. But then you telling me the rookie – Who's well? He'll be a second-year player, but he can't get the grace. You trying to tell me he got to start off firing on all cylinders? Isn't it ironic how all of a sudden, hmm? Jimmy G, eight-year starter, well not starter, but eighth-year veteran, come in. He has the opportunity to mess up, be hurt, be set up by a rushing game that's top five in the league. But then you telling us that. Peter King talking about, well, you know, Trey Lance got to start off on fire. He can't just be good. He got to be great right off the bat. He has to have a great offseason. He has to have a great start of the season. I'm like, time out. Jimmy G hasn't been a top 10 quarterback for the Niners. Since, well, not for the Niners, but in the NFL since he got to the Niners. His stats hasn't been blown away. Like, come on, man. How all of a sudden now we got to sit here and put the clamps on Trey Lance, but then Jimmy G got all this grace. Like, they don't even seem right. But now, because it's Peter King, who is a prominent figure in the NFL, saying these things, most people go take that and be like, ooh, this is the narrative over the offseason. Trey Lance must come out. All guns are blazing. He can't get six, eight, ten weeks to kind of get conformed into the system, get adjusted to the speed of the game. He don't get that. He, he don't get that. Trey, Trey, uh, Trevor Lawrence can come in last year. Get the, he get the opportunity to mess up, to not always play well. Zach Wilson come through in the Jets. But see, here go the narrative. Jimmy G took the 49ers to the NFC Championship game. <sighs> I'm like, here we go again. So, Hopefully, man, I'm going to be on here, man, kicking it with you guys. I don't want to keep you too long. I just want to share with you my first video about the Niners. Well, not necessarily my first video, but this will be the first video of many videos coming for this offseason where I'm going to come on here, kick it with you guys, give you my thoughts um, on what's going on, what's the word that we're hearing throughout the offseason, um, and just let you know. What's my pushback? Or even if I agree with some of the things out there. You know what I mean? And so, I just want to thank everybody. Come on, man. Kicking it. Chilling with your boy. The twin maker. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the twin empire. And for all the the, the, the daddies out there, man, who have brought forth seed. I mean, if you have any questions or any stories or any funny thing about you know, becoming a parent, man, please drop a comment down there, man, and let me know because I got tons of stories of how having my children, man, had definitely changed my life, and being a father of two sets of twins, have, I mean, it's a different perspective for me, you know, and I get people just looking at me like, what? So, that's why I'm the twin maker, and welcome to the twin empire. And so, man, I thank you guys for coming out, chilling, kicking it with your boy over the last 30 minutes, man. Make sure you click subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully, I get on here, man, kick it with you guys, bring some life, bring some fire, bring some enthusiasm about the Niners and other things that are going to go on um, in my life and what we all like to do, whether it's, like I said earlier, it's basketball, like, ah, yeah, 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 you know. Chef Curry's or, you know, watching the Zach Levine's out there or the DeMar DeRozan's or even anime, man. I'm a big animation fan, whether it's Naruto, um, Naruto or Goku or, you know what I'm saying, One Piece or, you know, just um, Berserk or Bizarro. Like, I mean, there's a, a plethora of things that I enjoy to do, man, even with the music and the hip-hop scene or um, movies as well. I can't wait. Um, my birthday is in March, so... I'm a big Batman fan, so I can't wait for this new series to come out, you know, with Robert Patterson. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm just excited, man. I want you guys to enjoy the channel with me. Um, kick it. 
Uh, my name is Ryan. I like to rest, relax, chill with the twin maker man, and just uh yeah, holla at your boy. Peace out. Love you guys. Keep it pushing and strive for the mastery.